there, people of the internet. We are continuing our little series of the road to 100,000 subscribers. Hopefully this video uh, influences you enough to go ahead and smash that subscribe button. It is completely free, and you'll be able to watch more of my content. So, we already checked out the earlier two versions of the Mosin Nagant rifle, and this time we're going to be checking out the M44 Mosin Nagant. Now, whenever I talk about the M44, we are also going to be talking about the M38 as well. The M34 and the M38 are basically identical other than the fact that the M44 is the version of the rifle that has the bayonet actually attached to the rifle itself versus the M38 which does not have the bayonet in place. So the concept behind these rifles is that these right here are a shorter version of the 9130. And let's go ahead and talk about why that is the case. Whenever the M38 and M44 were being made during that time period, countries were beginning to see that their long, full-power, cumbersome rifles well, they were just a little bit too unyieldy for what it is that standard infantry was going to be doing. So what most countries ended up doing was they took their standard pattern of rifle, in this case we have the Mosin, Mosin uh, rifle, and uh, well in this case we got the 9130 action, but it is basically identical to the 1891 pattern of rifle. We take that same exact action, that same exact system, the same exact everything, and we shorten the rifle down. Same cartridge, same, literally same everything. This right here is identical to the 9130 in terms of uh, how it's manufactured and how the sights are and how the stock is, with the exception of the end of the barrel. Well, in order to achieve a smaller, shorter rifle, you just kind of cut down the end of the barrel the best that you can. However, this right here, the Mosin Nagant M44 and uh, M38 rifles. They had a uh, a shorter barrel for the full power rifle cartridge than I would deem to be uh, enjoyable. Anyone who's ever fired these rifles knows just how unbelievably powerful the concussive blast is for these rifles. So you still have the full power 7.62 by 54 rimmed. This is a 174 grain projectile traveling at about 2600 feet per second. This right here is just total ammo. This is some full metal jackets. This is the cheapo stuff that I get for the YouTube channel in some off-brand unknown clip. But they load the same way. It's literally the same action. These right here are five shot. Uh, this is a five shot bolt action rifle with a single stack magazine. It's got an interrupter in there to try and immediate or remediate or uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Try and assist with avoiding rim lock. That's basically what I'm trying to say here. Uh, the 7.62 by 54 rimmed cartridge is a rimmed cartridge, and so as a result with rimmed cartridges, you get the issue with rims catching on one another, and that right there institutes rim lock. There is an interrupter system inside of these rifles to try and prevent that from happening, since this is a uh, single stack magazine, and you have the interrupter rim lock with these rifles really is not that big of a deal, but it does still happen. On the M44, with this being a shorter length rifle, and a country seeing that they don't have to send projectiles, send bullets out at distances that they originally were thinking they were going to have to send bullets out to, uh, they were able to not only shorten the rifle for a more convenient, uh, a more convenient, what's the word I'm looking for? More convenient, compact version of their rifle, making it easier to carry around and whatnot, but they don't have to have these long rifles that are capable and accurate enough to be able to shoot out at tremendous distances. For example, our leaf sight on our M44 only goes out to, uh, 1,000 meters, so that's one kilometer, that's still a tremendous, uh, distance to be firing one of these rifles at. However, our beginning 9130 pattern, these right here went out to literally double that distance, which nobody ever managed to actually shoot accurately at. So the M44 bayonet, very simple, literally just pulls out and it pulls forward onto, go ahead and come across my camera here, sorry about that guys. Go ahead, uh, it pulls out, pulls forward, and clicks into place onto the front of the barrel, just like uno momento por favor, this one's a little on the stiff side. Just like that, and now we have ourselves a uh, bayonet attached to our carbine that we can go ahead and go poke some stuff with. A little bit of trivia behind the Mosin Nagant bayonet with this being a spike bayonet. If you look at the bottom side of the bayonet right here, you see how it's a flat base. There, there's actually a flat tip screwdriver. Oftentimes people would use these bayonets as flat tip screwdrivers. That's just something that the Russians would use to take apart their rifle in the event that they had to take apart their rifle. We still have the 9130 simplifications with the M44 pattern. We got the round receiver and we got the 
uh, machine marks on this thing, although they are much nicer than wartime production. We got the very, very simple, uh, the, the rear side, very simple rear side. Uh, we got the barrel bands that are incredibly simple in comparison to the 91 pattern barrel bands. And, well, this right here is just, like I said, the, the 9130, but a little bit shorter, and the M44 just so happens to have the bayonet attached. So now we're going to go ahead and take our couple of rounds of ammunition here. We're going to send some lead downrange and see what the M44 does in comparison to the 9130, which is what we uh, saw in the last video. All right, so we have our Mosin Gott uh, M44, almost called a 9130. Uh, basically, it's a 9130, just shorter than with the bayonet. So, I'm sure you guys are noticing a theme with these rifles. What we do, open this bad boy up, and just like the other Mosin-Nagant patterns, because these are basically identical, we take our five round stripper clips, or stripper clip, uh, and we shove it into the top of the receiver here, just like that. And then all we do is we push these rounds into the receiver, just like that. That was not that bad at all. Now let's see if we got rim lock from that. Oh, no, no rim lock this time. Okay, let's go ahead. Send a couple of rounds downrange with our M44 rifle here. I really, really like this rifle. I like the short, light, compact nature of this rifle with the bayonet and the bayonet attachment and whatnot and everything up there. It's really not that lightweight, but compared to something like the 1891 pattern, definitely shed off a couple of pounds. Okay, well, I just got my steel target down there. It's held up by a bunch of debris and whatnot, so let's see how long it takes for that steel target to fall down. The concussive blast on this thing is absolutely insane. Oh my god, that concussive blast. So, 762 by 54 rimmed is still a full power rifle cartridge. Now, whenever you shorten the barrel of a full power rifle cartridge, the gunpowder is not done burning by the time it reaches, by the time the bullet reaches the end of the barrel. So the pressure and the powder is still burning and still igniting to push that bullet farther, but the end of the barrel is there and the bullet's already gone. So as a result, you just have this massive concussive force that comes out of the end of the barrel. And uh, we call that Russian dentistry because it is so powerful that it shifts all the teeth inside of my skull to various different locations. Jesus Christ, and the amount of force that we're sending downrange to this thing. So like, I have literally made videos of me using the concussive blast of this rifle to absolutely blow things apart, excluding the power of the actual projectile itself. I know people like to talk about how powerful a cartridge is based off of the bullet, but my god, the amount of power that comes from the cartridge, <laughs> the amount of power that comes of that, out of that muzzle blast is phenomenally large. I hope that the shockwave that I'm dealing with is coming out on camera. I hope that you guys can see the huge fireball out of this thing. Oh, that poor steel target. Somehow it is still standing. So, a couple of rounds from this thing. Recoil, really not that bad, in all honesty. Even though it is a full power rifle cartridge, 174 grain, traveling at about 2,600 feet per second. Uh, the concussive blast, way worse than the actual recoil. The recoil on this, not bad. It's about on par with the 9130. These two rifles are relatively the same in weight, considering that this rifle has a uh, bayonet attachment and whatnot to the front. Although we did shave a couple of inches off from the barrel, all of that weight is added back on with that bayonet attachment and whatnot. So they are, like, relatively the same weight. So as a result, the recoil is going to be basically identical. However, that <laughs> that unbelievable fireball that comes out of that thing is nuts. So I have two cartridges here. These are both the full metal jackets. And what I want to do is I have two water jugs right here. And I'm going to put them out there and I'm going to hit one water jug with the 1891 pattern and one water jug with the short barrel M44. I imagine both water jugs are going to get blown apart. But I want to see how much of a difference there is, because since we have a shorter barrel, we're going to have less velocity out of the uh, M44 than the 1891 long barrel. But I want to see what sort of difference we see, if there is a difference with what we see there. So a couple of full metal jackets, a couple of water jugs, I'll go set them up. Okay, uh, just two water jugs out there. Let's go ahead and hit one with the M44 first, because it is closest to me on the table, and I've already got it picked up. And there's already a round of ammunition loaded inside of it, so we may as well send this one downrange. Hopefully you guys can see those water jugs. This GoPro doesn't have a screen on it, so I can't see what it does and does not see. 
Let's send it around. All right, all right. I was expecting that to kind of explode, but it did not. It is still there. Okay, now these are just full metal jackets, so the rounds are just gonna zip through and through. But even so, let's go ahead and see what we get with the long barrel. Just because of the direction of where I'll be shooting, I'm gonna step right over here so the round bounces off the ground and into the car. Sending it, let's do it. Oh boy, all right, yeah, that was, that was quite a bit more energy onto the target. Okay, let me, let me go grab that real quick. Okay, so of course both rifles are going to put a tremendous amount of power down range. But here is our, let's see, this is our exit wound for our uh, M44, and this is our exit wound for our 9130. The amount of energy transfer onto these things was minimized because they were full metal jackets, but this one was clearly going faster because the, the, the rupturing of the plastic is probably about twice the size on this container as opposed to this container. So hopefully that comes out well on camera. We got two very, very different impact cavities. That is fascinating. I was not expecting that much of a difference. Maybe I'll get myself a couple of soft points and I'll run this test again. We'll save that for another video though. But I was not expecting to see that much of a difference in terms of the power from the velocities of these cartridges. And it makes sense, the concussive blast that comes out of these things, I mean, that's all power that's supposed to be pushing the bullet, but it's, it's not pushing the bullet because the bullet's out of the barrel. Anyway, folks, thanks for watching. Hopefully this earned your subscription. I am trying to earn my way up to 100,000 subscribers. And upon doing so, I'm going through every single one of my firearms talking about them. And hopefully you guys want to get on board with that. So fingers crossed. Uh, thanks for watching. Like, subscribe, share. Description below links, links to all sorts of stuff. Uh, go check out some of those links. I got Utreon and Patreon and Discord if you want to come talk to me in a merch store. If you feel like picking up a shirt to help support the channel because the work that I do here is not free and in or it is actually quite expensive. <laughs> so, hey, thanks for watching. I'll see y'all on the next video. We're just going to go ahead and continue doing the trend that we've been doing. done this. Bonnie and Clyde be damned. <laughs> the poor man's Garrett. <laughs> Shame that bolt-action shotguns aren't uh, more mainstream.